Show off your pride for the outdoors with new gear from the Sporting Journal Radio store. Go to SportingJournalRadio.com, click on store, and browse our selection of hoodies, hats, mugs, and more at SportingJournalRadio.com. Garrett, how's it going, man? Hey, it's going good. It's uh, crappie season, so we've been just immersed in crappie fishing. Yeah, you know, I missed you when I was up there for the governor's fishing opener. We talked and tried to connect. It just didn't <laughs> happen. Um, and we got on the crappies, and then now I've seen you posting, and you sent me a few pictures that uh, Dan's going to put on the screen here in a second, of some crappies that you've been catching lately. And we got on some crappies. We did not get on the crappies that you got on, apparently, because you got on some good ones. Well, there's a lot of water. You know, um, I've probably fished 11 lakes here just recently in the last couple. And some you can get, uh, you know, basically 90% of them are going to have crappies, but some of them have small crappies, some of them have medium-sized crappies, and some of them have some real giants mixed in. We've had a couple. I think I've had three fish. And people throw this term around a lot, but we've had three honest, measured on a weight on a digital scale, two pound crappies here in the last week. So it's man, there is some good ones around too. If you kind of keep moving and keep hunting, but we've been, you know, uh, this is a good time of year to go scout too. If you're, you're not familiar with the area and you want to check out new lakes because it's kind of predictable where the fish are going to be there. Uh, that water temp gets around 65 degrees and they're going to be in those hard stem bull rushes. So you can go to these lakes without having an intimate knowledge of the lake, go find those patches of hard stem bulrushes and, uh, and, and, you know, figure out where the crappies are or at least get close. Now the water temps are kind of varying depending on what lake you're on. Um, I've fished in a lake recently here, the, the water temps about 67 and those fish are still on beds in the hard stem bulrushes, but then some of the smaller lakes are warmed up way past that. And those fish are not on the beds anymore, but, hmm. um, you know, the bigger lakes are really, really seeing more spawning fish if you want to look for them in super shallow water. What's that, what's kind of that magical spawning water temperature that you like to see, Garrett? 65. 65 is really the magic number when you're going to see the most activity on spawning beds. Um, but, uh, you know, even up to 67, 68 is still good. Um, once it gets into the 70s, then you're going to start to see less fish spawning. Immediately after the spawn, a lot of times they'll, they, they don't go far away. It's not like they migrate completely across the lake, but they're going to push out to harder bottom areas. So if you can kind of highlight some stuff, uh, points that, you know, are harder bottom near those spawning areas, that's kind of where you're going to find them immediately post-spawn. And then the pre-spawn fish, um, you know, usually you've got fish in, in several phases of things happening. The pre-spawn fish are usually going to be on deep cabbage, kind of adjacent to those spawning beds too. So, mm. uh, you know, we kind of employ a few tactics. Uh, we'll, we'll get right up and fish slip bobbers right in the hard stem bulrushes for fish that are actively spawning. I like to use a slip bobber versus a peg because you can pitch those out. When it hits the water, it'll fall straight down in the pockets of the bulrushes and right to your bobber stop, and then you can fish in there. Then when you go to reel up, you can reel fast. That'll pull that rig up to your weight so you're only this far, you know, however far under the surface. And, uh, you know, reel it in really fast so you're not getting tangled up. Um, with a pegged float, if you throw it out there, you're a predetermined distance the whole way, and you're just going to get caught up in that stuff constantly. So we're doing that, and then we're, we're throwing uh, small Northland jig heads with plastics. I really like those Bobby Garland uh, baby shads. A couple of the hot colors for us have been uh, electric chicken, which is a pink and uh, kind of a – combination of pink color and then there's a like kind of a creamy white they call monkey milk has been really good and those baby <laughs> shades on a jig head that's not that's a really good debate too who comes um, up with these names it, first of all like i know i wish i had that i wish i had that job to name. I was like, yeah, when we when we filmed with Randon up there in Ottertail County, Randon Olson uh, last fall for muskies, we were talking about the names muskie baits, and you know one was named McLovin, and I, you know it's like how do you how do where do people come up with these these names? And we were convinced that it was like a two a.m. Friday night around a campfire with a cooler full of beer, guys uh, brainstorming names. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, the two best colors in those baby sheds for me have been, the last week have been that monkey milk, that light white, and then that electric chicken. Pink is electric always chicken. good. Crappies yeah, like pink. Yeah. Um, 
And so we've kind of, if we're not fishing the rushes, we're looking at that cabbage immediately outside, um, you know, adjacent to those areas where you know that they, they spawn or they should be spawning. And then once you think it's over, once you start to see water temps in the 70s, you know, in those smaller lakes, you know, then try to locate that first hard bottom area you can find that's, you know, going to be in close proximity, kind of adjacent to those spawning areas. But yeah, we kind of have fish doing all kinds of different things. The bass are really on bed super heavy up here in Lakes Country right now. If you're going to be patrolling the shallows looking for crappies, you're going to find bass laying everywhere. So if you wanted to do some catch and release bass fishing, I uh, had a good customer that came up on his own and was going to do some bass fishing the other day. And um, he went to a lake that I had guided him on last year. I think they caught 78 bass sight fishing. <laughs> in Jeez. I think it's funny how you said that, though. Yeah. It's a lake that I guided him on last year, and then he just went there on his own this year. Is that? Yeah, you know, and, and the reason was is uh, I, I didn't have time to get him out. Oh, okay. uh, I'm kind of just so immersed in, in panfish uh, right now and crappies that I just I'm just living crappies right sure. now. So uh, he was more he's more dialed into those bass than, than I am. I'm I'm seeing some as I'm cruising around in between crappie spots, but I I haven't even been bass fishing yet this year honestly i hate to admit it i, I like to go fishing bass, it's okay I, bass fishing is okay i'm i'd rather catch crappies oh yeah we got to talk about hannah real quick too we got to wrap this up but you got to you had <laughs> you had hannah stonehouse hudson in the boat with you the other day i sure did I, my famous favorite famous photographer i got to fish with for a few hours and uh her, her boyfriend, Sam, uh, great guy, actually has a purple heart. Um, real humbling to have him on the boat the other day. And they had fun. We caught some crappies. Um, we, I don't think we caught a wall hanger crappie, but we caught a whole bunch of really nice ones, all kinds of 12 and up to 13-inch crappies. Hmm. Um, pretty fast action. We hit several different lakes in a four-hour morning. Jeez. Wow. That's dedication. Kind of a good energy, so. I need to be more, I need to be more proactive like that when fishing. I, I just like, ah, they'll bite. They'll turn on at some point. We're just not doing it right. Or I, well, you got to change colors or try something else. And sometimes you just got to try a different lake. And uh, Garrett, if you yeah, know, go ahead. In lakes country, that's really been the kind of the deal that we've been doing is uh, I'll go through my waypoints where we were catching them. And if we don't hit them in 10 minutes, we're on to the next waypoint. If we don't hit them in seven waypoints were going to my next lake and mm. start the waypoints at that lake you know and i was kind of thinking that when you were up for opener too i know you spent a lot of time kind of where you were and, yeah uh, i wish i could have got you to jump around a little bit uh, i should have but i had a great time <laughs> it was good and friday obviously was really good so i didn't think i needed to move too much on saturday but i was on a completely different part of the lake and uh i don't know i, I was trying to fish similar conditions that we found them in the day before and uh, obviously the weather had changed a bit, but obviously the, the crappies were not in that part of the lake like they were further down south, but that's all right. Um, sometimes you got to move around and, and if I was looking for a guide, that's a, that's, that's a nice trait in a guide to find because they're going to do what they have to do to find your fish. And if somebody wants to jump in a boat with you, Garrett, what should they do? Uh, you can give me a call on my cell phone. It's 320-428-5174. Or you can uh, send me a text. Uh, I have a website, slabseekerfishing.com, or the Facebook page, Slab Seeker Fishing at Facebook. And, of course, you can go to ottertaillakescountry.com. Garrett, thank you very much. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me on, guys. Have a good day. Hear more at sportingjournalradio.com or wherever you get podcasts. Did you know there are more than 1,000 lakes in Ottertail County? Yep, and I'm going to fish as many as I can. I'm an outdoorsy otter. Nothing beats a full day of fishing for me. The lakes of Ottertail County give me plenty of options to lower my boat and snag the perfect catch. Not an outdoorsy otter? No problem. Ottertail County has something for everyone. You just need to find your inner otter. To find your inner otter, go to ottertaillakescountry.com.